this is what i tell people about canada it's very easy to find your footing in canada if you are a patient person if you're not a patient person canada will teach you to be patient you have to be sharp my name is Nikki and welcome to my youtube channel Ada Canada today's video is going to be a little bit informal a few days ago I put up a question poll I was basically telling you guys to ask me questions because I wanted to film a Q&A video I haven't done this kind of video in a very long time I did get quite a number of them so I'm gonna try to answer them as much as I can and as best as I can all right so the first question is from Dr. Courage Idaho and he's asking what work do you do I have three jobs technically my first job which also happens to be my main job this is my main source of income in Canada is that I work for the government of Alberta that's what puts food on the table for me my second job is YouTube basically filming videos and putting them out on YouTube for you guys and then my third job is photography I started photography about three years ago in 2020 I even have a photography page but it's been <laughs> I haven't really been so active on that page I enjoy landscape photography sometimes lifestyle photography but mostly landscape photography but I haven't really like been so active on that page but yeah I have a photography page if any one of you is interested to like see what my work is like <laughs> so yeah those are my three jobs here in Canada all right so the next question is from sweetie underscore m sumto and he's asking are you single or married I'm single next question is from that underscore branch how are you able to find a foothold in bracket success in Canada from student till citizen this is actually my favorite question out of all the questions that people ask this is my favorite so to answer this question I feel like there are many parts to this question but one thing that really comes to mind whenever someone asks me this question is patience right how are you able to find patience by being patient and trusting the system I'm a very proactive person I like to do stuff like if there's something that I want to do I like to go ahead and do it I don't wait for people to do things for me when I was planning to come to Canada I wasn't even on YouTube at that point in time I didn't even know that there are people who make videos on YouTube that talk about coming to Canada I wasn't really used to YouTube at the time I did everything myself I applied myself I did the research myself I contacted and sent emails myself I, I never asked any agent that's how proactive I am and I was very patient and this is what I tell people about Canada it's very easy to find your footing in Canada if you are a patient person if you're not a patient person Canada will teach you to be patient my journey took me seven years this is this is my eighth year in Canada so it took me seven years from an international student to a citizen the thing that kept me really going was patience I always try to tell people one step at a time it's in stages it's a step-by-step -step process when you come in as a student you have to focus on what you're doing at that point in time so if you come in as an international student focus on being an international student focus on your studies and focus on finishing the degree and when you're done with the degree then you can move on to get a work permit and you focus on the work permit when it's time to apply for permanent residency you focus on applying for permanent residency and when you're done with permanent residency you focus on applying for citizenship so it's a step-by-step -step process and at every step at every stage you have to be patient you have to trust the process one thing that I've noticed with a number of people who ask me questions about moving to Canada is that many of them are not very patient it's always very funny to me some people will send me an email asking me I want to come in as a student and then get PR how can I get PR it doesn't work that way you can't 
move from international student status straight into permanent residency that's not how it works and i'm encouraging you guys to exercise patience as much as possible and take things one step at a time another aspect to it there is you have to be sharp when it comes to canadian immigration things are always changing formats are always changing you have to always put your eyes and your ears down to information receiving information always make sure that you're keeping up to date with information from i CC. no matter what changes are being made you are always in the know because that's one thing that affects a lot of people before your study permit expires apply for a work permit when you're done with school it's all part of being proactive the next question that someone asked is this one like all the questions that i'm going to be featuring are related to studying in canada right so this question is from jb cool smile and he or she is asking can i use my fully funded scholarship as my proof of funds I would say no when a school offers you scholarship of course there's going to be an evidence of that scholarship when you're applying for a study visa you're still going to need a bank statement you can attach the evidence of the fully funded scholarship with your study permit application but you still have to show a bank statement as a proof of fund in your study permit application you can't just use only a scholarship to apply for a study permit add the bank statement as well next question is from nature symphony and this person is asking hi i am studying bachelor of science in computer science can final year project matter in taking admission abroad yes because if you're in final year and you're currently doing your final year project i would advise you to finish your degree in computer science finish that project because when you want to apply for a master's degree if you are applying for a master's degree by research then your final year project is going to come in handy because you will use that as a form of research experience to let your potential supervisor know that okay i've done research in this area this is what my final project was this this was what my dissertation was or something like that so it really matters in terms of applying for admission for a master's degree and even if you're not going for a master's Masters by research even if you're going for say maybe a course based masters it's still going to help if you have to write some sort of like essay you know in order to get the admission it does help when you bring in stuff that you've done in your undergraduate level maybe you did some sort of research maybe you did some sort of project maybe you did some sort of capstone include it right no experience is a waste you have to put everything on the table when you are planning to come to canada because you don't know which one is going to work in your favor the fact that you have also added your final year project and explained or stated that this is what you did in your final year pro project it does put you at a higher advantage so i would say yes complete that degree because you're already in final year you're basically almost done complete that project and then use that experience to apply for a master's degree if you're interested in a master's degree in canada the next question is from everything in and this person is asking my father works in switzerland so can i just use his bank statement as my proof of funds yes if you're going to use your father as your sponsor then the proof of funds has to come from him so whoever you identify or indicate as your sponsor in your study permit application the bank statement should come from that person also if you're identifying someone as a sponsor other than yourself you also have to have a letter from that sponsor basically a letter stating that this person knows you in some capacity and is willing to sponsor your studies it's also good to attach some extra things like physical assets or something like landed properties or some other kind of asset that is going to prove to IRCC that you have some family ties in your home country when you're applying for your study permit the next question is from Annie Victoria and this person is asking master's degree or post baccalaureate which do you prefer and why master's degree is basically 
basically a higher more specialized degree for those of you who don't know a post baccalaureate is it's kind of like a diploma it's kind of like going to a college and taking some courses towards a degree almost synonymous with a diploma and this question is kind of relative and the reason why i say it's relative because it depends on what career sector you're going in it depends on where you see yourself what kind of career that you want to have or you want to build personally i would say that a master's degree is good because it sets you up for higher opportunities and also higher positions in your job if you don't have the opportunity to go for a master's degree you can go for a post baccalaureate in Canada which is very synonymous with a diploma a diploma is also good because you can still get a job in Canada with a diploma degree it's still possible to get a job the only thing there is with a diploma there are certain levels that you will get to that a diploma might not be sufficient there are certain positions that require a bsc with some years of experience so if you just have that post baccalaureate your opportunities might be a little bit limited but it doesn't mean that you cannot change the situation you can easily change the situation by going to a university to complete the remaining courses that you need to get a degree from a university say a bachelor's or a master's degree or something of that nature it's relative to what you want in terms of your career outlook your career projection if you feel that there is something you want to study in canada and it's better for you to have a master's degree so that you can be more positioned for success within that sector then i would say go for a master's degree if you feel like okay maybe you want to break your education and you're just not like ready to like take the whole thing all the way and you feel like you want to break your education then you can do a post baccalaureate when you graduate with the diploma from the post baccalaureate you can get some work experience maybe one or two years and you can decide to go Go back to school to complete that degree or use that as a supplement or like as part of your educational credentials to to get to a higher degree i hope this made sense so the next question here is from awesua angie she's asking our admission portal still open for 2023 fall semester or will i have to apply against 2024 fall semester and in that case can i still apply for fall semester 2024 in may slash june 2023 okay so this is three questions in one but i'm just going to break it down first question is are admission portals still open for 2023 fall semester i'm not actually sure if admission portals are still open because this is april we're in the month of april so i think majority of them would have been closed by now for 2023 fall semester fall semester starts in september except if you're applying to a college but if you're applying to a university to start in september most of them usually close the admission by january february or march at the latest it takes time to process applications for admission usually between one to three or four months that's how long it takes depending on the school or depending on so many factors like the volume of applications and if you're trying to get into school in september you should have applied since last year year as from april may june is usually when they start giving out admission decisions so that you have enough time to apply for a study permit with ircc look towards january 2024 for most schools whose application portals have closed for the fall semester the winter semester which starts in january should be opening up by now so as from april may if there is a program that you want to get into in a particular school and they accept winter 2024 or they've started accepting applications for winter 2024 which is in january next year then i would say apply if you wanted to apply for fall semester 2024 which is basically next year in september you cannot start applying by may june this year because the application portal won't be open the application portal for fall semester usually starts 
in September or October or November of the previous year. If you're trying to get into school by September next year, which is fall 2024 semester next year, then the admission portal or the application portal would open by September or October or November this year. So this is what I am saying about being very proactive. You have to keep your eyes and your ears down and monitor the school, monitor the admissions portal to see when it's going to open so that the moment it opens, you can just easily like start applying and also apply early. Don't wait until the last minute to submit your application. The next question is from Blue Sky and this person is asking if you are to go back in time, will you still choose Canada? I would still choose Canada. Things aren't so good back home. The environment in Nigeria, which is where I'm originally from, the environment in Nigeria is not good. When I say environment, I'm talking about the system, political system, the educational system, the career system. Like there are so many things that are just not right and the system is just not really working i don't have any regrets with moving to canada i don't have any regrets with becoming a citizen i don't have any regrets in this journey the opportunities that i've gotten here and the things that i've been able to achieve here if i were to still be in nigeria i don't think i would come close to half of what i've been able to do or what I've been able to achieve here and besides me moving here I'm not just doing it for myself I'm doing it for my future family if I have the opportunity to create the future that I want for me and my family I'm going to seize that opportunity and make things better for them if that makes any sense. The next question is from Aweswa Angie again. This time around, she has like two questions. So the first question is between one year postgraduate work permit and three years postgraduate work permit, which one has more benefits? I think this question is kind of obvious, right? So definitely the three years postgraduate work permit has more benefits because it gives you more time for you to apply for your permanent residency. If you have a three years postgraduate work permit, it means you can work in this country for three years. And that is more than enough time for you to apply for your permanent residency if you want to continue staying in Canada. If you're not ready for permanent residency, you can always extend your work permit, but like, in my opinion, it just doesn't make sense to extend your work permit because the money you're going to spend extending your work permit, you should use it to apply for a permanent residency instead. Three years is definitely better. And then the next question she asked is, after the one year postgraduate work permit and permanent residency, is there a way to still stay in Canada and still work or you will be asked to go back to your home country because your permanent residency has expired? Or can you still stay in Canada legally and work? Generally, what is permanent residency and what happens after your one year permanent residency expires? but you want to stay back in Canada and work out your citizenship. Because your graduate work permit is what it is. It is a work permit. Permanent resident means that you can legally stay in Canada for as long as you want to. This is just like the basic explanation of what permanent residency is. If you are a foreign resident, it means you are only in Canada for a short period of time. But if you are a permanent resident, it means you can stay in Canada indefinitely. Permanent residency is valid for about five years. So what it means is that you can live and work and breathe and eat and sleep permanently in Canada for five years. When your permanent residency expires or is about to expire, you should apply for citizenship. If you want to continue staying in Canada, apply for citizenship. In my opinion, I feel like there is no point extending your permanent residency. Anything that has to do with extension, there is really no point spending money extending permanent residency because it's going to involve money. And the money you would spend extending it, you can just channel it towards the next level of immigration that you qualify for. You don't have to go back to your home country. You don't have to wait until your permanent residency expires. If you came in with 
a PR status, then you have to stay in Canada for three years. Once your three year time is done, apply for citizenship. If you came to Canada as a student, then you have to go through a longer process of you know getting a work permit. From work permit, you get permanent residency. And after your permanent residency, you only have to stay in Canada for two years and then you can apply for citizenship. So that's two years out of the five year validity of your permanent residency. There is no point waiting until your permanent residency expires before you apply for a citizenship. Next question is from Sarima F.A. Uche. And this person is asking, can I do a BSc in a science course in Nigeria and switch over to do a one or two year diploma in tech in Canada? Yes. What you're basically asking for is a career change or a career switch it is possible have some sort of experience in in tech take some courses on coursera or udemy or something right if you can take some online courses just to promote your knowledge of that area of tech that you want to go into because it does help with your experience if you have some sort of experience in tech then i would say yes use that experience and use your degree to apply and the next question is from bernard obeng mensa this person is asking hello ada can i use my uncle's bank statement as proof of funds my uncle lives in the abroad by the way yes you can use your uncle's bank statement as proof of funds make sure that you get a letter of sponsorship from him and if your uncle has any other assets then it will be nice to also add it to your application package for a study permit next question is from Chingwe Mena and this person is saying good evening Ada I'm opting for a master's in digital media and it's a one-year professional course can I apply for another one-year program to sum it up to two in total so I can get a three years postgraduate work permit more like a double master's I intend picking professional communication for the second program they're both 12 months programs respectively I'd appreciate if you reply me. Thank you. Yes, it is possible. If you get an admission to the first master's program that's one year, take it. If you get a study permit, take it and come. And then you can, while you're here studying for that master's degree, you can apply for another master's degree. If you qualify, they give you admission, you can apply for that master's degree. You basically just have to probably apply for a study permit extension. Usually your study permit will be valid for the same length as the one year master's program. Check the validity period of your study permit. Yes, it's possible to do a double master's if you have the means and the capacity to do it. I would say go for it. The next question, and this is going to be the last question. It's also from Awesua Angie and she's asking, in choosing between fall and summer semester, which one would you suggest for a master's degree? As in, which one, which one has more opportunities for funding in terms of scholarship, etc.? Fall semester is better because I don't really know of so much scholarship opportunities that are being offered in the summer. Majority of scholarship opportunities or applications usually are against fall semester. If you're getting money from bursary, there are more bursaries in the fall and in the winter semester compared to the summer semester. Summer semester is usually for internships or co-ops or practicums or you know some some kind of work experience that you want to get. A lot of people who come to start school in Canada usually do so either in the fall semester which is September or in the winter semester which is in January and then they spend the summer working so usually summer is for working and getting money choose fall semester because then you have more access to scholarship opportunities that are being offered in the fall than you would in the summer and you can use your summer period to work basically so yeah all right guys so thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video thank you so much for watching please like this video i hope that i answered your questions as best that i as i could but if you feel like i didn't answer your question properly you can also comment down below with further questions that you have i'll get right to it please like this video guys it does help the youtube algorithm push my videos forward also subscribe to my channel please subscribe to my channel and join my community 
community turn on your post notifications so that you will never miss an upload the next time a video drops i will see you guys in my next video stay safe bye See it in your eyes when we leave for the night Way too many heartbreaks still on your mind